This is Startup a Storefront. Research suggests that people reach peak brain health at around age 22. By 37, memory begins to decline, and it's estimated that around 22% of people age 71 and older have mild cognitive impairment. But what's really interesting is that people don't typically begin taking brain supplements until their late 50s. This is exactly the conversation that today's guest, Patrick Schwarzenegger, had with his mom, Maria Shriver, when he moved back in with her during the pandemic lockdowns. He noticed that Maria kicked off every morning with a variety of supplements and a protein bar. This got him thinking, why not combine the supplements with the bar that she was already eating? Thus, Mosh was born. Mosh is tasty, adaptogen-powered brain fuel for all ages. In today's episode, we talk with Patrick about what it's like launching a nutritional bar, which is notoriously one of the most competitive CPG categories, why his dad would tell him and his siblings to sleep faster, and how being an early investor in Blaze Pizza showed him the signs of what was to come. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Patrick, co-founder of Mosh. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. People don't know, what is Mosh? What does the company do? Mosh is a mission-driven company aimed to educate consumers about what they eat impacts their brain health. Mm -hmm. Our first product right here is our Brain Bar. It's kind of an on-the-go, superfood, nutrient-dense protein bar with a bunch of brain-healthy nutrients in it, and every purchase helps fund Alzheimer's research. What I love about your story is you... you are you investing? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> are you raising? Uh, no. Yeah, we actually are about to. You're always raising. Yeah, we're, yeah. Not, we're not always raising, but we are about to raise. Well, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. What I love about your story is, one, I know you you invest, You were an investor. You started off investing in different companies. Yeah. And I think um, most people have the trajectory of they start their own companies. If they get lucky and make some capital, they yeah. become an investor. Yeah. And that informs them of how to run a business even better than they originally thought, right? True. And what, what I like about it is you're coming at it from a point of here you are having invested in, in some, some, some companies. And so you can kind of get a sense of what works, what doesn't work. And then you decide to jump into the pool right. and, and sort of do this. But why this, why this company? Well, I know obviously it tugs at some heartstrings for you personally, but yeah, I mean, just give I, people a window into the mission. Well, I guess I, I'll backtrack a little bit about starting of how I kind of started as an investor and why I started as investing versus starting my own company. I mean, I really had no idea what I was doing. As an investor? As an investor. Yeah. Or as what I was doing in my life. I mean, I started this when I was 15 in high school. I had started another clothing company called Project 360 that I sold. And I made a little bit of money. And I got really into like exercising and working out and then going to the grocery store. I was obsessed with going to the grocery store and just looking at the aisles and seeing what was new. But I got really obsessed with kind of nutritional labels and like what was in my products that I was eating. And I was always looking kind of for like the healthier alternative, more protein, right. less, sugar, less sugar, you know, more transparent ingredients. And I couldn't really find them. You know, this was 15 years ago. A, a lot's changed in the last you know decade with the, the food and beverage sector. So I was like, you know what? I made a little bit of money on this clothing company. I'm going to go out and try to find some companies that are tackling this better for you health and wellness industry. What year was this? This was 2000. I mean, this was, yeah, I was in high school. So I'm 29 now, 14 years ago. Okay. So kind of early for the better for you market. Yeah. We'll say. Yeah, yeah. This was like vitamin water was popping yeah. off and like. <laughs> which has a ton of sugar. Yeah. yeah which yeah. is, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so I met this guy, I was doing an internship for this guy, John Davis, and he had just sold out of a company called Wetzel's Pretzels. And the team from Wetzel's Pretzels was making a company called Blaze Pizza. And I was in on the meeting and they were positioning it as this more transparent, you know, pizza company and allowed the customers to customize their pizza and know where the ingredients were from. And it was under $10. It was like Chipotle for pizza. And I was like, fuck, this is brilliant. Yeah. You know, here I have like a little bit of money. I'm going to put it in. And that was kind of in the ideation phase. And let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. When you invested with them, what was the thing? Like, Why? Why did they you? just said Chipotle for pizza. And you got it. Yeah. And I was like, that and makes, you like, that makes And you liked sense. them. You believe that they were crazy enough or? No, at that time, I didn't know what to really look for in an entrepreneur. But okay. they just made a lot of money on Wetzel's pretzels. Oh, got so it. I was like, yeah, they know what they're doing. Victory You lap. know? Yeah, I got and you. And they took me to another concept at the time called 800 Degrees, which was about a $22 checkout. And they were like, this is kind of what we want to do, but cut it in half. We want it to be like $10 for your pizza, your soda pop, and a bag of chips or whatever. Okay. And I was like, okay, great. Long story short, that company grew from zero stores to close to 400. I opened a couple of my own franchises, wild success, never raised capital again because it was a franchise model, and we all made a boatload of money. Congrats, congrats, by the way. That's a pretty Thank good you. story. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I can't attribute anything really to it. It was really luck. <laughs> yeah. um, but the best thing was I got to learn a lot from that. 
I opened a couple of my own franchise stores and what I saw was kind of the macro economic side of our customers looking for different alternatives. They wanted different pizza cruts. They wanted different cheese options. They wanted these, you know, vegan meats and stuff like that. They no longer wanted just Dasani water. They wanted smart water. They no longer wanted just Lay's chips. They wanted kettled or, or baked and all these different things. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to take, I'm going to sell out. I'm going to take this money and go and find a bunch of different entrepreneurs that are tackling this better for you health and wellness space. And that's what I did. I went out there and my thesis was very simple to go out that had uh, products that had really total uh, addressable markets that were very big and that were offering the customer the better version. So Super Coffee is the low sugar Starbucks Frappuccino. Liquid IV is the low sugar Gatorade. Olipop, Poppy is low sugar soda. Yeah. Better Bagel is the low carb bread, you know, so on and so forth. Sure, that's, sure. That's my That was the thesis, thesis. there. Yes. Yeah. And then have you learned anything from investing in these companies that you sort of really apply to, to your day to day at Mosh? Yeah. So number one was that when I sold out of some of these companies, I realized, wow, this is really awesome, but I own 1% of a yeah. company. And not to toot my horn, but I was able to help these companies in the early stages bring other financial uh, money in, uh, help attract other celeb investors like we did with, with Super Coffee or with Cub Coats or Blaze even. Um, I could help them with different retail and kind of growth on that side. So I was like, you know, I think I deserve more than a percent, percent or something. And yeah. the largest discrepancies in valuations for companies were in the proof of concept to the actual uh, or from ideation into proof of concept, which is basically like, hey, I have an idea to start this water company. And then versus going out and getting into your first store and selling and showing that it works a little bit, all of a sudden was a $10 million delta, you know, and companies were going out with these large safe numbers. So I was like, you know what, why don't we start companies in-house? That's going to be the next kind of space for me is start them in-house. You know, I'll put up the capital up front. It's like a VC almost a little bit different. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And we'll be able to tell, does this product work or does it not? And I was always looking for kind of the right idea to start. And what happened was during COVID, I moved back home with my mom. And my mom's background, she's a, a journalist by trade. She used to do, you know, NBC and she does the Today Show still. But really, I mean, she's dedicated her life towards Alzheimer's research, brain health research ever since her father was diagnosed 20 years ago with Alzheimer's. And at that time, there was really no research done on women at all. I mean, all the research was done on male brains, white male brains. When it came to actual animal studies, it was done on, on male rats and stuff. So wow. she kind of wanted to figure out why that was. And women were two thirds of the cases of Alzheimer's. They were disproportionately involved with Alzheimer's brain related diseases and so on and so forth. And so she started the women's Alzheimer's movement, which funded gender based research. And she had done coloring books for people with Alzheimer's. She'd done a normal book called What's Wrong with Grandpa. She did a documentary. She did a movie called Still Alice, where Julia Moore won the best actress for, all centered around brain health and, and Alzheimer's. And so when I was at home with her during COVID, I was like, you know, because I get spins data and, and, and retail data and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, cognitive functionality and brain health are growing tremendously, like double digits during COVID. Uh, people are searching it online. It was the third fastest growing segment that year. AARP put out that the top three worry of people that were like 50 and above was cognitive decline. And I was like, there's no one is really speaking towards this audience when it comes to food and beverage. You're the perfect person to do it. Women are majority of the purchasers. People that are your age have way more purchasing power and they're interested in this and no one's talking to it. So why don't we start it? And did she have a routine that you would see her do already? Yes, okay. exactly. So like all of us, we have our own little routines. Yes, like, she has yeah. this routine in her routine. And people always say to me, why would you ever start with a snack bar? It's the worst category to go into, uh, especially during COVID. It had double digit decline year over year. And <laughs> I was like, you're totally right. But it was what was most authentic to my mom. Okay. Every morning she started her day by eating a bar with her vitamins, her brain health vitamins. Together, yeah, okay. And so much so that she gives it up every year for Lent. That's her thing that she gives up okay. because she's addicted to protein bars. Awesome. Is there a specific kind that she likes? Obviously it's mosh now. But. Yeah, now it's mosh, <laughs> mosh and only mosh. But she had, no, she was so like crazy with her bars. She would be trying all these different ones and this one would give her a headache because of the sugar. This one would give her a stomach ache because of the ingredients. This one, she started to make some at home, like all these different things. And I said, you know what, why don't we start by just taking the vitamins that you're, you're, you take, the vitamin D3, your B12, your lion's mane, your ashwagandha, your omega-3s and 6s. Let's just put that into a bar that is suited for you and that follows a brain-healthy lifestyle. 
which was high in, in protein, low in sugar, and high healthy nutrient fats. And let's just put that together. We'll see how it tastes. In, in the beginning, it tasted awful. I can imagine it's not good. It was so bad. I can imagine. That's, that's so a hard bad. thing to get right. And we just worked so on so forth. And that's kind of where we came up with Mosh. I mean, Mosh is my mom's initials, Maria Owing Shriver Health. And our first product is our brain bar. We like to position it as a, uh, a bar made for your brain. What was your first, uh, like the first flavor you guys had? Our first one, well... Actually, the first flavors that we worked on at home aren't ones that actually came out okay. because once we kind of were working on it at home and going into R&D and everything like that, then to commercialize it and work with a co-man is a different process. Sure. Totally. Uh, so our first bars that we came out with were chocolate, peanut butter, chocolate chip, and peanut butter. And then now we've got cookie dough and we're launching a lemon white chocolate next week. And we also got a blueberry almond. And so what was your first step in at least? So once... Once you, I guess, had family buy-in, right? Yeah. And so everyone, in, in terms of flavor, like, all right, this is the concept. You know the numbers from the spins data and, and sort of the retail sector. Cool, we see that going, that makes sense. And then is your first thought, go online, try e-commerce, yep. right? And yes. the subscription, and then your company's a little bit more valuable, and then you can keep some more margin. It wasn't even that it was more valuable. I mean, you have to remember, we started this during the thick of COVID. I mean, we started to work on this literally the week that everything shut down and I moved home with her. So there at that time, like, we didn't even know what retail was. It was like everyone was going for toilet paper and paper towels and you know, that was really it. Yeah. So we were like, okay, let's work on this. And yeah, let's, let's just launch a direct to consumer because yeah. we can get customer feedback. We can find out, do people really even care about this? Yeah. Do they care about Alzheimer's and eating for brain health? You know, we wanna get feedback before we even try to go to retail. And we need to improve, we're gonna need to improve a lot of things, you know, margins and just flavor, con you know, texture, sure. all these different, you know, variables. So. That's what we did. We just launched kind of direct to consumer and it's been amazing. What's the hard part? And so there's a couple of things where it's hard enough, but then you're adding these ingredients that aren't necessarily yeah. um, like the nutrients or yeah. the vitamins, right? Are a little bit more expensive. And so the hard part is, do I come to market with this? You can't call it a protein bar because then you're, you're locked into this weird pricing yeah. narrative that people are going to kill. And so what was that part of it like where you're trying to get the cost down, but the, the aim is not, it's not, it's not a cost you know, you're, it's not the goal of it. The goal of it is to help. And yeah, it's really tough because, you know, my mom wants to make this accessible towards everybody. Everyone, sure. Right. But I mean, if you reverse engineer it, we're going with pretty great ingredients. I mean, you have the grass fed whey that is expensive. Whey protein has gone absolutely astronomical the last two years. Um, you've got these different vitamins, like you pointed out. Almonds are the base. I mean, that's the first ingredient, almond or almond butter. That's more expensive than just peanuts or other nuts. That plus we we donate a percentage to charity. We're building, you know, making these in very small amounts. So it's a premium bar by by all means. I mean, this bar is you know three. If you're subscribing, three thirty three a bar, okay. which isn't insane because there are bars out there that are in in lieu with that price. But it's definitely premium. Yeah. I mean, you can go buy a Chewy bar or Nature Valley bar for under you know ninety nine cents easily. At but why store. would you? There's nothing good in it, right? I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. And then in, in terms of like the, just the daily values of everything that's in it, like the lion's mane, the omega yeah, so, what, is, what are the numbers there? Well, so you have to remember, we're a food product. We're not a supplement. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of regulations, which is what I've learned about what you can ha what you can say, number one. Okay. Number two, the amounts of, of certain ingredients So you're restricted. In it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we're at the maximum amount for a vitamin D in a, in, in a food product, for what example. It, what it, yeah, what is that? And you can just see on the back of our thing, we're at 15%. So that's the max. That's the max you can have. Wow. You can't go Otherwise, you that. become a supplement. Oh, no, no. If you're a supplement, you can do whatever the hell you want. It's not regulated. That's why sometimes you'll go and you'll see in a grocery store vitamin D where it's like, a thousand ICUs, 2,500 or like a hundred, you know, different people have, yeah. or like you get a pre-workout and you see like, you have like, wait, you have 25,000% of your daily value of B12 in there, you know, right. they can do whatever they, they want. But in food, you can't, I mean, you're, Jeez. I guess you can, but you're, you're, you'd get regulated. Yeah. Allowed. So of That's the B12, of the, of the D3, and then in lion's mane, ashwagandha, you know, those types of things, there's not a regulation amount so you go towards kind of like what is the daily value that is supported by you know doctors nutritionists etc yeah. omega-3s you have to have 250 mcgs to have it so that you can promote that it's that you have enough of it that it's well that it's good for brain health okay. you know and that was like a huge lawsuit with uh horizon milk 
okay. that they have it. I don't know if you know Horizon Milk. They have uh, yeah, I remember the red. Healthy yeah. brain, the yeah. yellow uh, tagline on their red cartons. And so they were sued because they didn't have enough? Well, they did. That was the whole thing. And then they went back and forth and fought. And that's what it was. It was like 250 MCGs of Omegas have to be in there in order to qualify to be. Wow. Yeah. I mean, okay. there's, they're, you know, they're very <laughs> conscious of what you can and can't say. And then during COVID, since you can't go to the grocery store and like give people little, little amounts to try, how are you sort of getting the name out there? I imagine social media, marketing. Yeah. yeah. So we did something. We started by creating a landing page about 90 days before launch. And we used my social media, my mom's, and we built an email list and we did a campaign. So basically what we found out was that CACs, you know, customer acquisition costs were rising tremendously. And that's to go out there and acquire a customer. But what wasn't that expensive was to acquire an email. And so what we did was we created this landing page and we would would go out and acquire as many emails as we can to give you the chance to win a free year supply of Mosh. And if you told... Joe Schmo and Joe Schmo's friend and so on and so forth, you would get more entries into winning a free supply. And so we started with that and we racked in like maybe 20 something thousand emails in the first month or something like that. And our, and our thesis was, okay, if we can get these emails for so cheap and people for so cheap, then we can convert them through our own email marketing at a way more efficient rate. Yeah. So what we did was we did that and we allowed them to try all the bars at a way discount rate before going and launching to the public. And that's how we were able to honestly sell out and do six figures in our first week without yeah. having to go and market. That's really smart. Were you always an entrepreneur? Like even as a kid, did your, did your yeah. parents sort of guide you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was. Because you seem with it. Like you seem with it, which is really, it's really cool to talk to you in that, say, uh, in that way. Because you, like the, the story of you being in the kitchen with your mom and the way you analyzed that experience mm-hmm. is exactly like an entrepreneur's brain, right? It's yeah. like so natural. Right. But I feel like you, it, that, I don't think that's something, I don't know if this is true, but I think you're born with it is what I'm saying. But for you, like what was the growing up? Yeah, it's funny you say that because like growing up before like going to school or when we would go on vacations as a family, my dad would have us do this this like mathematics problem. He called it the ladder and he would choose a random number and you would have to do that random number times one and put the answer, then times two, put the answer, times three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you had to divide each number by that again and see if it equals the same okay. number, if that yeah. makes sense. I got it. And I became so weirdly obsessed with numbers. Okay. And so he started to, I think he must have like picked up on that or, or you know, something. And I always started to, to get interested in business. And so he, he had me do lemonade stands, him and my mom. Okay. How old and, are you? When you oh, this like was your like first like one. Six or okay. five, something okay. like that. Yeah. And I remember one of my first birthday gifts I can really remember was one of those cars that you, you like little kids can sit in and you can like, yeah. and it goes maybe like five miles an hour or something sure. like that. Yeah. And he got me like a truck version so I could put my lemonade stand lemonade table stand in the into back. the back. <laughs> and he would walk with me and I would drive it down to the street corner and we would set up this, this lemonade stand and my parents taught me like what profit was, okay. right? How yeah. you take lemons, you squeeze them, how much a lemon is, how many cups of water you get from that. Okay, that's your cost. Now you have to double it to make yeah. a profit. What is revenue? Yeah. What, th- that kind of stuff. And that's kind of where I got... Did they take the tax money away? <laughs> yeah, no. They didn't, they didn't teach me the tax yet. That, that came up later in life and that really hit hard. Um, <laughs> that's funny. But uh, it was just like the basics understanding and of it. And you enjoyed the math of it. You yeah, enjoyed like the, loved it. the ingredients. And yeah. so then when I was in middle school, I started this company called Project 360, which was kind of like a clothing company that, that raised money for different charities. And my first product that I did was this... I don't know if you remember those Livestrong bracelets. Sure, yeah. So they were like little skinny yellow braces with words. Of course. And so I got these really thick ones. I got them from China with this girl, Jack Vanek at the time. And they were like this thick. They were like maybe an inch and a half. Okay. And what I did was my mom, when she was first lady, she had these these, uh, conferences for women. Women's mm-hmm. conference, mm-hmm. and as you know, women are majority of the buyers of, of everything. And yeah, um, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and take all these different words like empower, love, you know, women exclamation mark stuff like that, and put it onto these bracelets. And I'm going to go and walk around the conference center and sell these. And so I bought a bunch of uh, pillows at a store, and I took the pillows out, and they okay. were like clear <laughs> pillowcases, yeah. and I put them all with the different bracelets in it. And then me, my brother, and two friends walked around selling these things. And I did like 
twenty thousand dollars of bracelets in the in in a day. That's what's up. And I was like, oh my god, business is so <laughs> fun. And I just went from one business to the next, and and so on and so forth. And I just became kind of obsessed with always, you know, tinkering. T- yeah, tinkering yeah. with businesses. That's really amazing. But all the businesses I did, and and the same thing with Mosh, it was always very much about you know, can I create a mission driven company? Could there be a B Corp in there? Could there be a way to give back to also profit, sure. but to find ways to give back? Which and is so hard that's to do. what we always do with all of our businesses that I've been a part of is found a way to give back. And last year we raised fifty thousand dollars for uh, women's Alzheimer's movement. So it was pretty cool. Kudos to you. you. So you mentioned this earlier, but your your buyer's like forty years old on the low end, and then let's just say forty plus. Yeah. And so when it comes to finding them, yeah. like that's one thing I asked my mom. I was like, because my mom, for people who don't know the story, my mom comes in. And she had ordered uh, your product and had it delivered to here, to my office. Oh, really? And so then I brought it to her. And I, I was like, this was maybe like three months ago. Okay. Not that long ago. Oh, okay. And then I brought it to her. And I was like, what is this? And she started explaining it to me. You know, and she was really compelled by your mother's story, actually. And, yeah. and like the tie-in. And I was like, oh, wow, it's really interesting. And then I started thinking, kind of like the entrepreneur. I was like, how did my mom yeah. find the product? You know? Yeah. And so... I forget. I think she told me. I think she told me Facebook. I think she. Okay. I think she told me Facebook. But it made me interested in 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 sort of your worldview on that, right? Mm-hmm. It was like, okay, so if I have this product, it's for forty plus. Mm-hmm. It's a totally different marketing exercise. Totally different marketing. Yep. And so give people a window into into how you market this and 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 you know obviously it translate. It worked. Whatever you're doing is working. Yeah. Yeah. No. It 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 is. Knock on wood. Honestly, we're just super authentic with our storytelling of my mom and I. I mean, our ads that we run or videos that we make all cost a dollar max. I mean, we do everything selfie style on our phones, just in the office, chopping it up. And we just, we edit them together and we have another guy on our team, Cameron, that helps with it. And it's really just the storytelling about why we started the company. You know, people that are 40 above, they really resonate with like you said, my mom's story, her relationship to her father and being a caregiver and her father having Alzheimer's, they really resonate with the idea that it's a mother-son company that we started together and that there are things that I can do today that will help my brain health tomorrow. And there are things that my mom want to do now when she's you know 65 before it's quote unquote, you know, too late or something like that. And we're just really authentic with, with that. But you're not on I like mean, TikTok. Are you guys on TikTok? No, we're know. actually just going there. And actually okay. the fastest increase in, in TikTok users is, is our hardcore demo. Oh, nice. So it's something that we're looking at. But as far as like actual tactics we use, yeah. um, of course, we do generic Facebook, Instagram ads. Uh, we have our newsletter. We have our blog. And your email list. Email yeah. list is super that's successful. Strong. We have our Mosh Pit, which is our online SEO blog. Oh, that's funny. We pump out maybe 15 articles about brain health a month. Okay. Nothing to do with the product, just about, you know, what you can do, why ice baths could be good for brain health, you know, something like that. And then we just do a lot of organic stuff with my mom. Like we had one of our highest sale days yesterday in the last maybe six months or something like that. And it was just my mom and I going to Erwan where we just started. I saw that video. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, just yeah. like our first time going on shelf. Yeah. And we just had one of the guys- in Santa Monica, us, right? Santa Monica. Yeah. And just coming and filming. And it really was our first time going and seeing. And it was just a really, I think, you know, wholesome, cool video of just us seeing the product on for the first time. Yeah. And we just chopped that up and it, and it just did, you know, really well. I mean, we had a huge spike in sales from that video. And That's great. It's just, it's also just Where do really they put cool. you at the grocery store? Just like, so if I walk into Iran, where is it going to be? Yeah, that's interesting you say <laughs> that because that's one of our biggest like thought processes right now is what do we want to do in the future? Yeah. You know, exactly. right now they put it next to Air One is, you it's know, it's a little it's, different. It's, yeah, exactly. It's not like everywhere else. It's not at all like everywhere else. So it's, it's, you know, they put us with other bars, but their other bars are not like your Quest Bar or Lara Bar, something like that. But that's a really interesting topic of where do we want to be placed when you go to Target or you go to a CVS and you go to these different places. And that's what we're figuring out. I mean, there are places like CVS that have now created the whole brain health section of their store. They're the first people to do that. Target is really interested in in doing that as well. So we'll see. We're still a fully direct consumer. Like NeuroGum, as an example. We had them on the podcast. They're they're, they're they're really great guys. They're like where you go pick up your your drugs, like your prescription. They're like over there. But it's gum. Yeah. 
It's yeah, like, I mean, so, cash registers where everyone wants to be, right? I mean, like, yeah. whether you're a chocolate, you're a bar, you're a little shot, you're a drink, you know, cash register is great. But I remember, I remember like, cause every, anytime we talk to a founder, I'm always like, okay, let me go find their product in the store. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, Neurogum, interesting. I wonder where CVS puts them. It right. really informs you of how, let's say macros, they're, they're viewing this product as a phenomena still. Yeah. And so I remember, and I was like, it took me probably 15 minutes to find their product without asking anybody, you know? Right, right, right. And then right. I realized, wow, okay. That's interesting, but that makes it really difficult for the entrepreneur, I think. Yeah, and we're still, you know, we still have time. I mean, we're 15, 16 months old right now. And for us, our main thing is is continuing to do direct consumer and adding in Amazon and Thrive and other channels like that. But we still have the beauty of getting to explain to people yeah. what this is, yeah. you know, or doing a podcast like this. I get to explain to people not only what this is or why we created this, what the story is behind that. When you're on a shelf, you can't. It's hard to do that. So that's going to be a, a, a real significant uh, hurdle for us as we go to cross that bridge. But I look forward to it. You mentioned the other flavors coming out, but are there anything else? This is always the CPG investor question. Yes. Right? It's always like, what else is out there? Right. What are you guys doing? You yeah. know? And it's like, is it drinks? Is it this? Is, the, uh, is right. there anything on Definitely your... Definitely not drinks. No. Nope. I've been in that. I still am in that <laughs> business. I'm not going to do it anymore. No, we, we definitely are. I mean, we trademark this thing right here called the brain brand. Um, I explained before, Mosh is my mom's initials, but brain brand is really what we want to run with and create other product lines that speak towards brain health. Okay. We've done probably close to 10,000 surveys now of our customers. And the number one reason they come to us is for the brain health benefits. The number one reason they return is the brain health benefits. Uh, number two is the no sugar. And so really what we're, we're thinking of doing is just creating different product lines that speak towards brain health, that follow that low sugar diet, but that really become ritualistic. So things that you can do each and every day that can help your brain help tomorrow. That's really smart. I remember I went to business school and I think the only thing I learned in there was do surveys. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, really yeah. it. I went to business school too. Yeah, that's like I the one thing. It's like, it's like, it's like, don't think you know anything. Yeah. And that's what I love about CPG in the sense of like, you just find out from your customer if it's good or not. Yeah. Independent of how you and your taste buds react to whatever thing. 100%, that, that was my biggest learning experience when I launched this brand was stop trying to make everything perfect. Yeah. Stop trying to perfect it. I went through at least 20 different, more, maybe like 40 different versions of this bar yeah. before we launched it. We just kept tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and how did we want it? How did we want it? How did we want it? And we made a good product, but I mean, the second we launched is when you get the most feedback. Yeah. And those months and months and months of, of time that went by that we didn't get it out to the marketplace, it was flawed on my part of not getting as much feedback as we could because really, you know, those couple hundred people or a couple thousand people that are giving you feedback in the beginning, those are your really hardcore consumers. I mean, those are the ones that are going to ride and die with you. And they continued to be there with us and have given us feedback and we've FaceTimed with them. We've Zoomed with them to get their feedback and why they hated the product, why they loved the product, what they would want different. And um, it's been really interesting to see. And we've continuously made little changes. I think people like that journey. I remember my first company, we had a, I had a bow tie company. And we, yeah. so we ordered a bunch of bow ties from China. And um, the first iterations were like three inches. And so yeah. it was basically like, it's called a butterfly bow tie, but it was a little bigger than it should have been. And so it was more like a clown bow tie. And I just remember like, as we were mailing these things out, I would write, you know, write letters like, we know this is a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, we were going for two and a half inches. They went an extra inch. We don't know why, but on the next shipment, we'll we'll give you guys a freebie. And so many people love that. Yeah, like the it was um, like emails we would get were just so people were like touched, and they didn't mind it at all actually. And we were like, oh, they're here for us. They're here they for are. the ride. They are. And there's but there, there's a beauty in the transparency. You're just like opening that door to them. There is a beauty of the transparency. When we launched again, this was 2021 September 2021. Uh, we sold out in a week. And at that time, I don't know if you remember, that was like when there was everyone in their mother was saying the word supply chain, yeah. you know? And it yep. was like, there were, I remember there was literally like hundreds of boats out uh, on, the, on the port that couldn't get in and stuff like that. And I remember talking with our co-man and trying to get the ingredients and they were like, sorry, man, it's not gonna be like four to six weeks. It's gonna be like 12 to 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. And we had sold subscriptions to people, mm -hmm. you know? And then having to communicate that to every person that was on subscription of like, hey, you're not going to get your product for the next two or three months. And, but really communicating it and this is why, and we really broke it down, right. 
we had so many of them that stayed on when we did launch back in the first weeks of December. And the other thing we did that was really cool was we had a flavor funk when we launched with our chocolate. The chocolate, the, the, the fats interacted with the mushroom extracts in a very bizarre way with the heat that created this, this off flavor. Uh, this is right when we launched. And people started to message us that exact thing. And so what we did was we did this win, win back campaign and we did handwritten letters to every single person that complained yeah. with the new chocolate uh, flavor once we got it and a handwritten note in there and just saying, here it is, this is on the house, this is free. If you like it now, come back and, and you know reactivate your subscription or whatever. Yeah. And if not, thank you for giving us a, a shot. Yeah. And we had like a major, I think it was like 40 something percent win back, which in percentages of a direct consumer is Huge. It's huge. Yeah. That's great. I know you act a little bit too, and I know I asked you this earlier, but yeah. while we're on, the thing for me, when I, so I do real estate development, and in, in real estate development, it's, it's, a, it's a hurry up and wait game, right? Yeah. It's, like, it's like, okay, that's we film, submitted man, to that. And, so, <laughs> and so a part of me is like, man, what am I going to do with this free time? And there's, it's part of why I tinker in investing, mm -hmm. and we have the podcast, we do other things. Yeah. And so I always think about it like, maybe, maybe like you could, in my head, the story goes, I could run a company while yeah. I'm waiting for my shot. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. yeah. Well, yes and no, right? I mean, I don't want to say that I'm responsible for everything. I have an amazing three-person team that is also responsible for the results. I'm responsible for, you know, getting the product off the ground and, and running it and creating the team that's responsible for the results, but it's not all me, you know? Probably same thing here with you. With 100%, your podcast, yeah, right? I would say, yeah. I, so, I would say I have the easy job. I just could have yeah, talked to yeah, people like exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. So, so same, <laughs> Yeah. right? If you're a one person show and you don't have the proof of concept yet and you're really, you know, putting in all of your life savings and it's like everything, you know, you've got to be 24 yeah. seven. I mean, it's a, it's a slug fest. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to belittle the role of what it takes to do this, but you for sure are, I mean, you are running a business. This is a business, right? So you are doing that. You know, my dad always says to us kids, you know, you have the same amount of time in a day that Albert Einstein did or that JFK did or Muhammad Ali, you know, so don't ever say that you don't have enough time. And his famous line that he always tells us to do is to sleep faster. <laughs> what he always says. That's amazing. What's the best advice your mom's ever given you? Uh, my mom is, I mean, she is, they both have so much advice. And I think my mom is, is I think, kind of going back to what I said before, which is always finding a way to give back. You know, she comes from a very, you know, fortunate upbringing and background. Her mother started the Special Olympics. Her father started the Peace Corps. And, you know, kind of her mom's side, the Kennedy, you know, family, you know, grew up in the idea of serving your, your country and your nation and, and finding ways to give back. And that's always kind of been instilled in all of us, us kids, that no matter what we do, we're in a very fortunate position in life, you know, financially, health-wise, just the platforms that we have, you know, find ways to give back to, to others. I remember uh, for me, so my, my family was in politics in Peru and okay. growing up as a kid, like we'd go to the grocery store or anywhere we went with my grandparents um, who were heavily involved in politics and people would just come up to them and thank them. Right. And, they, and then they would tell me the story, me as like a five, six year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would tell me the story about how my grandfather or grandmother gave them like their first job or right. put them in position to do this thing. And now their kids are like at, at in private school or whatever it was. Right. And these stories were endless and mm -hmm. it was just like the coolest thing. And yeah, for me, it, is, it was right? always like, like for me personally, the lesson there was, I want that. Right. Right. And, and I think when it, when it comes to That's business, cool. it's so cool. But I think when it comes to business, it's like, um, and I tell people this depending on their business, but you, you can in fact have a movement and a business. hundred percent. It's hard. Yeah. But I think if you just open that door, you can really impact people's life and in, in it in a totally different way where it's like a win-win where you're going to be successful as a business owner, but you're also going to create. And I think that's kind of what you're doing here. Like the brain band, like you're creating a real awareness right? and you can do interesting things like, like five K's or public events, or you can do things where it's not about your product. Right. Right. right? That's but the whole point of the mosh pit is like, you know, create educational information about brain health. Yeah. And, and I just love the marriage of those two things. And yeah. so everything I do, I try to think about it like that where it's like, what are we doing for the community? Right. You know, and then every, and the math and stuff, I think that'll take care of itself. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm a huge believer that, that customers buy the why, not the what. And mm -hmm. if you have that real mission and you have that, that educational part, purpose behind it, that the product will go. And maybe we started with the wrong product. I don't know. That's what we'll learn, but we, we have the right mission. You're open to it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's smart. And what's on deck for this year? So more stores, you're in eight stores, I think now you said. Yeah. We just launched eight stores. Yeah. That's our first store this, this, uh, this last, whatever week. 
But I mean, our goal is not store growth right now. It will smart. be in a, in a year. <laughs> Um, what'd you say? I said smart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, no, it, it, it is time to start growing into stores. I mean, the direct consumer landscape has shifted a lot in the last 24 months, but we just haven't been ready for it. Honestly. I mean, we've improved our margins almost double this last year. Is that just by uh, buying more like economies of scale? There's or is economies it... of scale. A lot of it was with, uh, the weight, the shipping, um, to different people, okay. our customers and okay. optimizing that, optimizing our boxes for that giving discounts once they buy three of them because that's where the weight shifts for for packaging and pricing. How much is the um, box? You said it's, it's like $36, three, three something you said per e, rank? Yeah, if you subscribe, yeah, $37 or okay. so. If you just buy it at Air One right now, three forty nine. Okay. Hopefully in the future we get that to be lower. But yeah, there are, there are tons of levers that you can pull to to change your product margin. The biggest question is just how much do you want to pull that versus sacrifice the integrity of it? That's the hard part. Yep, that is. <laughs> That's actually as scale. Is. Anything so. else you should know, Patrick? About? About, about, about Mosh? No, nah, man. You, anything you else you want to share? Man. You, you guys come and try it out. We're on moshlife.com. We're on Amazon. Come and try us out and, and see what you think. I appreciate you coming on the podcast, brother. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. If you made it this far, I bet you loved the episode. So you should join our YouTube channel membership for only $2.99 a month. This gets you access to one, the whole unabridged conversation. Two, you get the episodes on Monday, one day earlier. Three, you get two additional entries to our giveaways. Check out our Instagram to see what we've given away. And four, you get access to seasons one through three. That's over 100 episodes of wisdom and life-changing advice. What are you waiting for? Join.